session. Uh, this is Nellie Deutsch. It's not Dr. Rummish. I'm going to do, introduce our speaker and then I'm going to go over to my other computer as me. All right, so uh, we're going to get started. If you could just add in the chat box where you're from and um, what you're doing, what time it is, what the weather is like, anything you'd like to add to uh, give us a sense of your presence, even though uh, we don't see you, we can't touch you. This is virtually online. Uh, please feel free to use the chat box uh, for anything. You can't disturb anyone because we don't hear you. And uh, it makes it more exciting, I think, to use the chat box. I can't live without it. All right, so a little bit about uh, our speaker, Dr. Rama Sharma. I have known uh, Dr. Sharma for a number of years, uh, time flies, especially internet years. So it's been at least uh, seven, maybe eight years. I'm not quite sure. I know where we met, and I'm going to be uh, introducing that as well. Dr. Uh, Ramesh Sharma has just uh, completed a wonderful open education resource MOOC with uh, almost 1,500. You can see the numbers here of participants on WizIQ. It was very successful. I think I'm looking forward to the next one because uh, open education resources are very, very important to, uh, to us as educators and to our students. A little bit uh, more about uh, my uh, friendship, I would say, and uh, work with uh, Dr. Sharma uh, is on Wiki Educator still is on Wiki Educator. I started with Wiki Educator in 2007. And I think um, Dr. Ramesh was right there as well. We uh, gave some uh, courses together, uh, and also uh, Dr. Ramesh gave all these courses. These are all free online courses on Wiki Educator. There are workshops, learning for content on how to create and use uh, open education resources. We're also involved in the User Page Expo Award where uh, the winner of the best uh, wiki page um, gets awarded with a monthly recognition. I think that's really, really exciting. It's been going on since 2008, I believe. Uh, Dr. Ramesh is from India. Sorry the way this PowerPoint turned out. Uh, it didn't look like this. <laughs> on my system. He has a PhD in education in the area of educational technology and a master of computer application MCA. He works as regional director um, of Indira Gandhi National Open, of course, Open University. If you'd like to know about Open, I think Dr. Remish is probably one of the uh, leading experts in the world. From 2009 to 2011, he was the Director of the Institute of Distance uh, Education, Continuing Education, University of Ghana, Ghana in South America, the only country, by the way, where English is the first language. And I think that's where we met um, Dr. Sharma when you were still there and maybe going back and forth. Um, he's also involved, and you can read more about the UNCTAD and the United Nations uh, bodies. Dr. Ramesh volunteers a lot of his time. I sometimes wonder where he has time. Uh, in different organizations, you can see some of them. And of course, open education and e-learning. And he's on the advisory board, editorial advisory board of many uh, journals, peer review and other journals. Again, this is very time consuming. People don't think that it's only your name up there, but it's a lot of work. I know because reviewing uh, papers takes time. And that's uh, just the beginning. We're going to hear more. So I'm going to pass on the mic and get the uh, PowerPoint presentation. By the way, if you look at the chat, you'll notice that um, there's the link to the PowerPoint presentation. You're invited to uh, download it and get the uh, links because uh, they don't come out active on the whiteboard. But if you open up the PowerPoint 
presentation, everything, all the links are very active. In addition, you're invited to uh, copy and uh, the chat at the end and paste it anywhere you wish. This is part of Moodle MOOC 2. And these are the presentations. You'll be able to get a certificate if you uh, reflect on 10 of the out of the 22 presentations. So let me pass on the mic to our gracious speaker, Dr. Sharma. And I'm going to go hop over to my other computer so I can come in as me. It's kind of confusing, but online we can do so much, including change our identities. Okay, so I'm passing on the mic. This shouldn't take uh, more than a few seconds. Of course, we all have different uh, connections, so it depends on that. Out of the body experience. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so I don't think it went through for some reason. So I'm going to try again. Let's try with the, we'll do this one step at a time. There we go. It worked. Hello. Okay. Good evening. Hello, everyone. And welcome. I hope uh, you can hear me. Just indicate uh, in the chat box. Hello, Tom. OK, OK. Thank you. Thank you, Larry. Thank you, Helena. Thank you so much. Uh, in fact, uh, during the starting of this uh, session, I uh, I was not having any audio or video, so I was not aware. Although I could see the slide transition. On, uh, hello, Michelle. And uh, at the outset, let me thank uh, uh, Dr. Nelly for giving me this opportunity to present on Moodle MOOC 2. And uh, uh, I have, uh, uh, like you all, I have also registered for Moodle MOOC 3 also. Uh, which will be which is going to be held next year so it will be <laughs> uh, thank you thank you alina thank you so much namaste to you as well so uh, since the introductions have uh, already been done by dr nelly i think i can begin with my presentation and At the outset, uh, let me begin with uh, a childhood riddle, which uh, uh, my good friend, Dr. Sanjay Mishra, he is the director for Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia. And he, during one of his presentation, he asked this question that uh, a, what is that does not get reduced after sharing with someone else? Oh, very good, Thomas. Very good. Yes, knowledge. Knowledge is that which is uh, what we can, yes, love also. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I also agree with that. So next time I'm going to add that point in my, <laughs> in my list of answers. Uh, so, uh, but uh, for the sake of uh, my this uh, theme today, uh, uh, I'll go ahead with knowledge. And you know, there are uh, I consider that there are three important stages uh, for knowledge, as you will as you will all agree with me. The first is the creation of knowledge, and uh, then the transmission, and then the advancement of knowledge. So, creation of knowledge how the knowledge was created you know whatever we know as of date currently what we know has been possible due to these three processes involved with knowledge when the information turns from uh, uh, information to the knowledge the first it has be, it has to be created something was created by someone sometimes somewhere that's why we know that we, we know that what is what was created and what has been passed on from generation to generation to us and uh, there have been we, we think 
uh, there are thinkers there are philosophers there are scientists as a common person whatever we think uh, either we think for uh, to solve some problem uh, it can be of any type be it personal problem social problem or or, or whatever it is so the first step is to uh, do we do we retain distant knowledge more than current uh it, it, it depends so first the 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 creation creation comes first and then it has to be transmitted you know i i once read on the website of unesco that there are certain languages or i think around 8000 languages which are going to be ceased now because the speakers of those languages they are no more with us and The, the people they are not practicing those uh, languages then there are certain other things like i remember there is a bird called as dodo it is extinct now killed by us so uh, or maybe uh, uh, finished due to climatic or whatever the reasons can be but it has to be transmitted whatever we know as on uh, date we know because it was transmitted transmitted how maybe uh, there are in the if you see the initial uh, uh, beginning uh, uh, the no, the knowledge was transmitted orally from one person to another person from teacher to the students from one generation to another generation and like that and then uh, from there then uh, it came uh, you know there are certain uh, issues with the verbal transmission we tend to forget and the message it can get misinterpreted on the way while we transmit it from one source to another source then the we, we thought that okay we can keep it uh, a lot of older people remember older memories and forget what they did last week uh, tom not only that i think even now sometimes i also forget that what i ate yesterday and you know sometimes if you are watching television and uh, uh, something is going on and it becomes difficult say if you are listening to some songs that what was the uh, first song when you are in the fifth song so sometimes you know we have short term memory and long term memory so so that happens and then we 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 graduated to uh, the uh, uh, writing uh, communication stage in which initially the knowledge was stored on papyrus and then stones you know stones they are very difficult to move from one place to another place although there have been many messages uh, written by even in indian history we read about uh, so many good messages by the kings for their uh, uh, people to, to 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 guide them to to, to provide them knowledge but it difficult and when uh, the paper was invented and the printing press came into being then it the life became quite easy but uh, even the paper it had certain uh, uh, life stage so, and then the the uh, uh, introduction of electronic media uh, in terms of, you can still remember in the older days when we used to have those audio tapes and video tapes with those uh, a long mag magnetic strip to it and the uh, searching was sequential in nature and then uh, uh, we had uh, uh, nowadays like uh, it is uh, usb storing a vast amount of knowledge into it so the size has become smaller and the capacity has become bigger and not only that i i, I remember uh, uh, two uh, uh, wonderful examples of uh, uh, the excellence of human engineering uh, these are the uh, space crafts uh, uh, like pioneer 10 and voyager 1 and i think uh, uh, pioneer 10 and voyager 1 they became the first uh, uh, man made uh, uh, i can call it a machine uh, living over uh, a solar system and uh, it's it's many billion years away from earth but still we we, we keep receiving up faint signals from uh, some of the space and gone uh, they were launched uh, for the study of uh, either jupiter or mars or saturn and something like that you know what is good about it or what is unique about it say for example on pioneer 10 i still remember that uh, it contains certain information and uh, like uh, it has a symbol of hydrogen and uh, the location of the earth from where it has come and is structure of male and female body and uh, some voices on uh, voyager 1 of about selected like that so transmitting knowledge from one place to another place and then uh, uh, we 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 need to advance the knowledge also to create new knowledge new, new knowledge 
so that the things they progress uh, this transmission or the communication can be of various types say for example if we see it in terms of online communications it can be one to one like uh, with the help of email we communicate from one person to one person or instant messaging now then another category can be one to many like we have certain blog entries uh, or emails i can send email to many people and then many to many type of communication in the form of like uh, we, 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 we we transmit we share knowledge uh, with wikis lists or, or online forms and then uh, another type is uh, uh, like uh, uh, many to one uh, for example we have aggregators and the tagging voting or foxonomy in which uh, like uh, uh, the, the tweet about the moodle mooc or uh, uh, different uh, kind of topics the aggregators they they collate all the information at one place and it is made available uh, our myths and legends the transmission of oldest human knowledge uh i i tom i think uh, uh, since uh, whatever i i i make, make it in this way that uh, the oldest human uh, human knowledge is the base for what we know currently so uh, definitely uh, there may be myths into it there may be legends but there may be uh, two things into that also uh, now uh, you know this is the a, a learning pyramid let's come to teaching now okay uh, teaching let's let's focus on teaching as uh, you can see uh, see from this uh, uh, graphic first of all uh, uh, i would i would like to have your opinion on uh, what do we or what do you understand or what, how do how would you define teaching i think we can have some of your inputs in the uh, chat box if i ask you how 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 to, how, how would you express what is teaching yes uh, uh, you, you know, uh, Nelly, uh, we are very soon going to uh, celebrate uh, the festival of lights, Diwali, and the people they are uh, uh, cracking fireworks. So, uh, you know, we have so many. Now it is the festival season. Hello, Himalata ji. Perhaps you can also explain that we are nearing Diwali, the festival of lights, when uh, uh, everything will be uh, lit brightly and. Uh, so uh, kindly bear with me i think it will stop very soon and uh, although i have my windows closed but still the, the noise is coming from there you know teaching is a uh, social process and uh, defining it may be a little difficult because it may be influenced by political and social background so but uh, in general terms what we consider teaching as uh, a process uh, by which we impart knowledge or skill to someone. Now, how does it help a teacher as a teacher to us or uh, to someone who is teaching something? Uh, and uh, uh, like in, in our uh, uh, presentation, did I uh, skip something? Okay. See, the best way to learn is to teach. Uh, Frank Oppenheimer uh, uh, said that. Now there are two ways of uh, 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 teaching methods. One is the passive teaching methods, like uh, you have heard about uh, lecturing, reading, audiovisual presentation. Simply we present something and demonstrating. In addition to that, there are certain methods which we call them as participatory, like group discussion, uh, practice, and teaching others. And you can see that uh, uh, this uh, uh, pyramid, it is showing that the most uh, preferred is the teaching others. And that is also the base of my presentation that if we want to learn something, it's uh, always that the best way to learn is to teach it. Uh, uh, even uh, Richard Bronson uh, also says that the best way of learning about anything is by doing it. It is a different point of view than uh, that one of learning styles. Very interesting, dynamic. Okay, uh, uh, thank you, Ortega. Now, uh, since as as you just now said that, uh, uh, and uh, teachers know that 
so why do teachers focus on instruction and do not allow students to teach <laughs> okay so uh, different roads sometimes lead to the same castle means that there may be different approaches and uh, a personalized approaches but the end target would be the same that how to enhance learning uh, uh, among the among some uh, in, among, among our students so how does it help if we if we are uh, means the best way to learn is to teach something that we can when when we when we teach something means that we need a good grasp of the content to pass on to others unless we have the uh, good grasp on it it will be difficult for us to to, to communicate uh, what we know to the others so that is that is one of the uh, uh, factors important and then we need to present content in different ways so that we can see it from different angles and that's why <laughs> all all roads lead to rome very good perhaps this this road is going to the rome and uh, uh, that is another uh, you know a good thing to to develop a divergent uh, thinking uh, among our students that uh, we need to we need to allow our students to develop those skills and those capabilities in which they can see the things differently and uh, it turns the uh, short term memory like uh, just a few minutes ago uh, tom was saying that uh, uh, we, we, we sometimes we forget that what happened just uh, a few moments before so it helps us uh, to turn the short term memory into the uh, long term knowledge and then uh, it helps us to verbalize this to teach is to learn twice uh, well said alina that's good now uh, this is uh, uh, an interesting cone of learning by edgar dale and uh, uh, he, he was an educator and in 1969 uh, he evaluated different ways of uh, learning and here you can see that uh, he has divided uh, uh, this uh, uh, whole of the cone into uh, two types the passive learning and active learning and then uh, a percentage has been given that people generally remember on uh, like 10% of what they read 20% of what they hear and 30% of what they see something like that and uh, uh, the, the the figure says that 90% uh, of what they do uh, uh, and what uh, based upon that the people are able to means what what are the learning outcomes about it that uh, when they try to say means uh, when they say something when they write something when they do something the the learning is active learning and they they are able to analyze the things define the things create some knowledge and evaluate something so that way but uh, there is an interesting thing which i found about uh, this cone of learning and particularly on on wiki educator in fact you know on wiki educator it has been mentioned that it was cone of experience and uh, edgar dale he wanted to create an intuitive model uh, of concreteness of various kinds of audio visual media in fact it was not uh, his intention to, to 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 project it in such a way that uh, it becomes a cone of learning uh, yes larry i think you can check uh, uh, perhaps i could not uh, while preparing it to the uh, the link on wiki educator but uh, on wiki educator i found that in fact it is written there that uh, his cone of experience has been uh, misinterpreted and uh, uh, edgar dale he did not uh, put these uh, uh, these percentages uh, in his cone he, and there was no scientific base also he just he wanted to uh, create it uh, in in some way that how the various kind of media uh, can be concrete on uh, audio and uh, uh, video on that parameter but anyhow it's a good it's a good graphic and uh, yeah normally we believe that uh, uh, if i hear something i can uh, forget it so like that this is an interesting although little old but uh, i found it a very relevant even for my presentation and for other societies it is the local mission which was uh, set up in 1999 uh, and they brought out this uh, report that returning to our roots a learning society uh, 
this this in in their uh, society uh, i'd like to point out this uh, thing that uh, uh, like uh, in, in in their executive summary we write as 24 presidents and chancellors of public state universities and land grant institutions to make the case that our institutions must play an essential role in making lifelong learning a reality in united states here we i i can say that uh, it is applicable to globally uh, for all the institutions like the lifelong learning is uh, uh, is the need of the hour and the concept of lifelong learning has been talked of before but for the first time we now have the technical means to make it a reality and that is very important here that now they say particularly in 1999 when that report was written that uh, we have the technological means to make it a reality we are convinced that public research universities must be leaders in a new era of not simply increased demand for education but rather of a change so fundamental and far reaching that the establishment of a true learning society lies within our grasp that is mean so what are the uh, important things coming out of this kelo commission report three things they they they, they stand apart the first is that they wanted to make lifelong learning as the core of their mission and then they they say that we need to create new kinds of learning environments and then there has to be some sort of public support of lifelong uh, learning and uh, they, they they have ident they identified at that time that it is possible because now we have the technical technological means with us based on that now how that learning can be oriented uh paul goodman in his book uh, technology enhanced learning opportunities for change he has identified certain principles like first he says that it it depends wholly on what the student does only indirectly on what the teacher or the university does means more it has to be the learn oriented uh, student specific center then uh, the another another factor which is there analysis of student behaviors begin with the analysis of the learning task we should first analyze the learning task and on the basis of that then from the entry behavior we must go to the terminal behavior how at what uh, level we start and what would be the end of that stage and that is a fundamental rule that the technology if it is there it doesn't necessary that we have to use we must use it only when when we see that how it will enhance the knowledge the learning in the students and as a teacher it will make our job more effective and better then we must use it just it should not be used for the sake of using it bringing something in it it it, it sometimes as we know that it can backfire now uh, this is an uh, another interesting uh, 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 thing about academic store uh greg uh, greg light uh, uh, roy cox and susan kalkins uh, in their book on learning and teaching in higher education they identified that uh, the we are having a short of uh, academic store which is due to some factors due to globalization the forces of commercial exchange and increasing calls for accountability and excellence uh, due to the due to the uh, pressure of the governments due to the uh, pressure of the parents they want to have accountability in the teaching learning system and even the student uh, uh, pressure also so uh, certain sort of we can identify an academic storm but still there is a burden burden remains on the educational system on the teachers as well on the on the system as a whole on the administration and what are what are the what are the various factors like uh, there is an uh, aspect of faculty student ratio and particularly this 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 point is highly uh, important i can say in uh, our uh, region asian asian or developing world where uh, the teacher and the student ratio uh, is very big there is a lack of uh, a large number of teachers 
and the teachers the single teacher there are single teacher schools in which a teacher they have to teach a large number of students then teacher time assessment responsibility to provide feedback to engage actively into the research and scholarship there are certain uh, 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 type of uh, you can say things to be done no it has brought certain changes in the relationship the relationship of society with the knowledge and the higher education how what are various factors various societal forces they are affecting the higher education scenario and then on the basis of the kind of knowledge which is prevalent at that time whatever the uh, level uh, of knowledge it it is bringing out a certain change in it i think i can i can uh, uh, explain it in this way that if we see in a, 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 a a matrix of uh, time and space in which uh, uh, the time and and space if they are same or different then if it is uh, like uh, at the same time at the same space it becomes the classroom learning and when if it is uh, uh, same space and different timings uh, it can it can lead to computer based systems where the uh, knowledge is shared with the uh, students in that way uh, Uh, at the at, at 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 the same time, if it is different uh, uh, spaces, then it it becomes an example of distributed uh, learning. And uh, with the with the with the uh, uh, a different uh, time and a different space, it becomes an example of uh, asynchronous learning. So there there these things they are bringing out certain changes in the uh, relationship. now there are certain uh, these things they have brought out certain transformations in the classroom and some of them are it's not the uh, complete or exhaustive list but uh, now this the students and the teachers they are using uh, video recording in the classrooms podcasts wiki blog micro blogging social networking uh, cell phones uh, we, we we call them byod bring your own device in the classroom uh, texting sorry it's a typo there it is not texting it is texting uh, instant messaging uh, tablets uh, another uh, sorry yeah, i my mistake and uh, live streaming so uh, the like the wikis there can be uh, two kind of wikis in which either the teacher we create wiki and invite all the students to work collaboratively on that or the student created uh, wikis in which uh, individual students they create their wiki and then uh, ask uh, uh, the the peer to contribute or to add to the uh, uh, knowledge or the content created by them uh, on their uh, uh, on their on their wikis then there are many other more, more uh, such kind of transformations uh, which are happening in the classroom which are uh, you know in a way uh, changing the uh, uh, learning scenario among the students uh we all know about uh, arthur c clarke the famous sci-fi uh, author writer and uh, in uh, 1973 he gave uh, uh, three laws of prediction and i find them very suitable so i included them in my presentation he says that when a distinguished but elderly scientist states that something is possible he is almost certainly right when he states that something is impossible he is very probably wrong this is the first prediction he made now what was the second the only way of discovering the limits of the possible is to venture a little way past them into the impossible which would be fantastic if pandit arshi sharma is it task and <laughs> okay elena sure <laughs> definitely god willing uh and if opportunity comes i'll be happy to visit class one thank you so much and then uh, uh, the uh, uh, other prediction uh, uh, clark said that any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic so this is the part that magic the, the, the technologies the advanced technologies they create a short of a magic and you see Uh, the 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 advanced technologies like uh, google glass uh, and uh, there are so many things 3d printings they are changing in in, in fact you know uh, certain things when we introduce them to the 
uh, educational uh, uh, scene first they are uh, used in such a way that the, the students and they uh, uh, form in the form of certain disruptive technologies there are uh, various uh, uh, form of uh, revolutions how the things uh, from the simple pen and paper and up to the cloud computing online uh, online uh, things how the disruptive technologies they have changed our educational uh, world it's it's really wonderful to note that you just see the disruptive innovation and uh, uh, a disruptive means here that uh, sometimes uh, in a short time scale a certain technology brings out such changes either in the technology itself or the the, the result of that uh, like you still remember that uh, um, nowadays perhaps in in, in fact uh, uh, i think three or four years ago i still had the original microsoft windows 4 yes windows 4 uh, the uh, software packet with me which i gave it to my uh, son and daughter to be uh, donated it to their school so that the school can keep it in their uh, museum library and where the students they can see that once upon a time the people they used to have those sorry it was those four so like that this is the floppy disk it went out and what came in the usb drive uh, the uh, 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 pager form and now we have smartphones and uh, I don't think you can you can see for yourself that uh, when it was the last time you wrote a letter personally to someone to your dear friend most of the time nowadays we just shoot an email and the communication uh, that's <laughs> uh, so there so these are the uh, disruptive innovations in the now these things they are bringing certain trends in the e-learning uh, uh, settings. Now, how how it is that that it is enabling the learners to move in a variety of uh, different and possibly unrelated fields over the course of their lifetime. And uh, <laughs> enough to debate on what Barbara brought to <laughs> Yes, no many. I think uh, every every civilization which came into India, they have brought uh, uh, extremely wonderful examples of their culture. Uh, we have so many things uh, like uh, the one of the wonders of the world, Taj Mahal, and uh, uh, there are many other things which we see, and then you can find that it has been a confluence of many so many civilizations many societies they, they all have contributed and that's why uh, the india it, it, it has become you, you, you call it as bharat uh, it's, it's 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 become a, such a such a wonderful place where different societies different peoples they, they and you know uh, in the, in the older times when india was the seat of knowledge and in takshashila which is in the eastern part of india and mohan jodado which is towards the pakistan side uh the the international scholars uh, from europe from china they visited india and uh, uh, studied indian scriptures went back with the knowledge to their own countries uh, another trend is happening that informal learning is a significant aspect and uh, the short of communities of practice then the personal learning uh, uh, networks pln or uh, personal learning environments they are on the rise and learning is has become a continuous process nowadays at as i will discuss in my uh, 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 next slides uh, you, you see the example of uh, now these open courses which are being offered by many universities and uh, many people if you see the distribution of their age groups you can see that from uh, younger to the senior uh, groups everyone is getting involved so the learning is a continuous process uh, we, we all wish to keep our learning active and technology is altering our brains the tools which we use to define the the, the way we use we are using the uh, technology it is definitely bringing a change in learning and not only in the individuals as well as in the organization also 
and uh, there are various uh, uh, learning theories how they are bringing like connectivityism uh, uh, constructivism pragmatism etc so they know how and know what and i i still remember kw ah the the, the table uh, as uh, dr nelly uses it uh, uh, you know some of our courses that how why uh, when and what so uh, an understanding of that is of utmost importance for learning uh, how this sharing and learning is being affected uh, particularly uh, you see the uh, mooc and uh, currently this this session is a part of uh, a model mooc 2 and uh, it has become so popular and so successful that uh, uh, we we see an, a registration of large number of people and uh, the experts and the scholars uh, in their fields they join us and they share their knowledge with us and we all feel benefited the moocs they are one of the platforms one of the examples and there are various platforms uh, in which we are we are sharing our knowledge and uh the people they 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 allow uh, others to to acquire uh, those skills which they with the help of someone they can uh, uh, upgrade their skills uh this is another good example and uh, i will give the credit uh, for it uh, to uh, dr vin uh, uh, mackintosh i think there are so many mistakes in my presentation i'm sorry that the spelling of uh, the name spelling of vin uh, is wrong so uh, maybe we'll, i'll correct it uh, later on uh, he he has told this about it that uh, uh, in uh, the open educational resources although the term was coined by unesco as we considered it in 2001 but it's a very good example that uh, yes thank you nelly i think i did my presentation uh, and i i did not uh, you know proof read it so it's my mistake uh, they say that uh, the, the scholars in the older times also they used to visit uh, uh, the libraries where these uh, documents they were uh, uh, kept and then the, the people they used to borrow them to read them to copy them and then return them we, it's it's a sort of uh, uh, open educational resources and to the thinkers which flocked like that and then uh, it's it's another example which is uh, this northwest university in africa they they have very recently joined open educational resource university and uh, i found this example where this uh, timbuktu families they used to preserve the their own traditions and uh, uh, knowledge on the scrolls and they have a wonderful these families certain families there you can see the uh, upper son his handwriting uh, uh, something creating a document maybe it looks like uh, here it is a case of uh, creating another copy of that because those old manuscripts they are very uh, fragile and to to keep them safe there it is so uh, this open educational resource university is a, a wonderful example of sharing the knowledge and through wiki educator like uh, 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 dr nelly uh, a member along with many of us we provide uh, uh, learning for content development uh, workshops there these are the free 10 days online workshops in addition to face to work face workshops also in which the facilitators they contribute by devoting their time and helping others to develop certain skills in them and i would like to uh, uh, thank many people uh, because i have also learned the same way and due to this uh, uh, same thing i think the, the sense of altruism that uh, whenever possible we try to give it back to the society that's why because the way at, at certain point of time uh, i also learned many things uh, from others uh, by participating in in, in certain uh, uh, workshops and particularly collaborating with uh, dr nelly uh, with her uh, uh, platform it for all 
and joining hands with uh, many colleagues there uh, for Moodle training, uh, uh, for uh, training on uh, we call uh, e-portfolio and and many others. So uh, I I strongly believe that a one of the ways of uh, uh, learning enhancing learning is to is to share what we know so that because as we as i started with my presentation it's the only thing which we share it doesn't get reduced the more we share the more we increase the knowledge thank you helena yes <laughs> i'm also learning from all of you so i think uh, this is the uh, end of my presentation yes so uh, Thank you, Thank you so much for uh, listening and now the session is uh, The session over. has just begun. I always mind. say that it, it never ends, Dr. Ramesh. It, this is the beginning. It's <laughs> yes. only the beginning. Yeah. The beginning of our collaboration. You know, if we've collaborated up to a point now, well, it's going to be even more intensive in the future from tomorrow, okay, or from the next minute. Yes. So what are we planning? What's next? That's a big question for everyone, including Dr. Ramesh. What is next? Uh, I think one of the things uh, uh, which I, I which I sometimes feel is that uh, the a, a sort of uh, developing knowledge uh, which is about information reality uh, reliability in which how we can be sure that uh, how to uh, ensure information is trustworthy and uh, how to validate findings perhaps you know in fact uh, it is it has one of the hunch uh, by establishing the credibility of uh, including uh, Wikipedia uh, uh, in the way that sometimes the people they were hesitating to cite them as uh, a certain sort of a research reference. So uh, to me that is one thing. And then uh, the another thing is that the literacy in the new media forms uh, including the text, audio, video, virtual words and understanding of how to create value with these forms. Uh, uh, that uh, that that uh, needs to be uh, one of the next things. And then, uh, since we are heavily using nowadays social networks uh, for uh, most of the things, including uh, office communications, teaching, learning, uh, professional development, even business houses, anyone you, you can see the example. So. How we can see that uh, the uses and the drawbacks of the social networks and the communication technologies uh, and how we can build strongly on those platforms. And then uh, the ability to uh, contact and leverage the expertise of uh, uh, these uh, specializing in the niche areas in which uh, the, 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 the people when they, when they, when they uh, come out with certain information and then to 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 uh, develop it into a certain sort of lifelong uh, personal learning network uh, networks uh, building upon a wide range of social and information based connections and perhaps this is what uh, uh, our platform it for all is doing which i strongly believe that uh, uh, like here on uh, model mooc 2 through visiq we have been successfully able to build a personal learning network uh, among ourselves and uh, this tribe is uh, ever increasing and uh, i feel very happy about it so thank you very much thank you thank you so much ramesh Notice that uh, Helena is trying to be provocative because I know that this is not how she feels, but it's a good question that many educators are asking. And the question is, um, Helena, I just lost it. Uh, Do you see it? <laughs> Why should we share our projects for free? She does, but it's just a question. How would you respond? uh actually there are there are some issues into it that why one uh, should uh, uh, share their material uh, free of cost with others 
you know i think there is a sense of altruism into it uh, it can be the uh, a, a reputation of an individual uh, or an institution by uh, like they see uh, you you take the example of mit and in fact i remember one of the uh, example cited by professor rory mcgrill who is the oer chair for unesco and commonwealth of learning and a professor at athabasca university he once told me that means he, he was speaking at some platform and he told that uh, when the athabasca university press they decided to go op, uh, open access and there was a uh, hunch that if you are providing uh, open access to your material what will happen to the sales interestingly they found that when the books they were made available uh, uh, through open access to the uh, community the sales of their printed books it increased so that was uh, uh, quite interesting and then uh, you know sometimes uh, it is uh, it's a short of that uh, uh, if i want take something i i i give something so uh, that can be another reason uh helena is asking sachi dikra bhati from delhi university uh helena a yeah, maybe uh, uh, because uh, in in delhi itself we have uh, some central universities which has uh, under ministry of education like igno is a central university and delhi university is another university and jawaharlal nehru is another university so uh, perhaps uh, i'm not sure uh, uh, if i have met uh, her okay um, any other questions or comments i think that you like chat messages have gone up so <laughs> let me see I yasmin uh, writes in french yeah konais she knows oh it is united french. states i thought that it is spanish no it's french your code name i i i, I, know. I, I, it's... I may have to call my daughter to read it if it is french she knows french <laughs> all right so uh, if there aren't any questions about relating to the presentation um we're going to uh continue this session in the next book i guess um and i'm looking forward to seeing everybody at in February at the uh, next Moodle MOOC. And it is next year because it's February, 2014. You're right. And we're yes. gonna have these uh, three times a year, which is really exciting. So I'd like to thank everybody um, for joining us. And Dr. Ramesh, it must be really late there in India. Uh, I guess it must be about 11. 11 o'clock yeah, at is night, 11 so I think night. it's time to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the noise is no, quiet. No, it is okay. <laughs> uh, you know, Nelly, sometimes uh, the sessions have been so interesting, particularly if you remember when I was in Goa, and there were some sessions which was uh, around somewhere around midnight. Even I used to make it point that, uh, okay, let me participate because I can forego my sleep. Uh, that's not uh, that important, but if I can get some new knowledge, some better information, so uh, uh, losing some sleep, uh, it's, it's okay. So thank you. Uh, that's like, more important. I'd like to remind everybody: um, you just, you know, you brought back what Stephen said, and it's what we all think. It's not about the content; it's about the connections that we make during these uh, live sessions and in uh, these online environments and the MOOCs. It's about the connections. So thank you so much, everybody, for coming, connecting, and uh, we'll see you uh, tomorrow at my session on uh, Moodle as a course and learning management system. Should be quite exciting. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye for now. This, is, this was recorded. Yeah. And uh, you can copy and take the chat with you, paste it anywhere you wish. Uh, you're also invited to uh, go to the courseware on WizIQ and get all the uh, information, including the YouTube video that's going to be shared in a couple of hours. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I also thank everyone for uh, their kind presence and uh, patience listening. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.